Hello everyone and welcome back to our FPS RPG series. In this episode we're carrying on from where we left off in the creation of our menus. Uh, previously we've been using just the default colours and fonts, nothing special that is already inside Unreal Engine 4. So in this episode we're going to go through the process of adding some artwork, some textures, some new fonts to this menu to make it stand out a bit better. So for this I have provided some resources, you can download them all in the link in the description below. So find that link and click on it to download all the assets you need for this video. So in here we've basically got, um, let me change the play mode to the viewport. This menu set up here with a simple grey bar and simple font for our menu tabs. So what we're going to be doing first of all is changing that font. So to do that, you want to import your font. I've already gone ahead and imported the textures. Um, and to make this a bit easier, we're going to make a new folder in here called Textures. And we're going to make another new folder called Font. And we're going to put the textures in the texture folder. Like so. And we're going to double click and open the font folder. And in here, we're going to import our fonts. So here we'll find our fonts in our resources folder that you downloaded you see it's called mumcake uh, this is something i just downloaded from uh, dafont which is a website where you can download uh, royalty free fonts so we can click on these and i'm actually going to import one of them first of all so to show you uh, some how the font system works so let's drag in the thin one first and when i do that it's going to open a window saying would i like to create a new font asset using the imported font face as its default font, uh, we want to choose yes. Okay, so now you've got two things here you've got a font and you've got a font face. Now, the difference between these is that the font is sort of the family of where you can add multiple fonts together to add different variations. So, and the font face is just the font that we just imported. So, let's import the other one. I'm just going to drag the bold one in. And this time it's asking me, would I like to create a new font face? We're going to choose no. And that's because we're going to add it to this one here. So I'm just going to change the name of this one to mumcake underscore font. Open this up and I'm going to click on add font in the font family section. And in here we're going to call it bold. And we'll use the bold mumcake. So now when we choose the bold option, we'll be using this font hit save and close that so then to make this a sharp in our menu we're going to go into our menu UI click on each of the text so quests there and on the right hand side details panel you'll see font family click on this and you should see one cake font click on this and you can see it changing now I don't want to use the default one I want to use the bold one so click on default and change it to bold and that is where we set up previously our different options in our font family so I'm going to do this for each one. And there we have our own custom font being used in Unreal. So now we've got a nice font. Let's work about the artwork. So as I said, I've really imported in the textures. And we've got three textures. We've got the menu header. The menu header selected, which we'll be using for the buttons, and a progress bar, which is looks white, but it's actually this border here. Uh, more on that in a moment. So let's look about how we use a menu header here, texture for our well, our menu header. So I'm gonna open up our player menu UI, click on the border for the top, and on the right hand side, I'm gonna go down to brush, choose the image for menu. Header T, and there we see it starting to show up. We're then going to go down to where it says brush color, and we're going to change that to be all white. So, and in the alpha one, so one, 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 and that tints it to be its actual font, uh, actual texture. Sorry, okay. And what this is actually doing is it's going to stretch it across the whole width of the border. Now because the state of this texture is uniform and tileable, you won't notice that stretching. Okay, it will look pretty uniform across the whole width. Hit compile and we are done. 
So let's look at how this appears in game. Already looking a lot nicer. So one thing we're going to work on is the progress bar for our player character. So let's just get the appearance of that done. So for this, I'm going to create another sub widget. So rather than just building straight on the player menu UI, we're going to create a sub widget for this. So I'm going to go user interface, widget blueprint, and we can call this player menu XP underscore UI. And we open this up. Now we don't need a canvas panel, we can get rid of that. And instead, we're going to be using a vertical box to store our contents. And our contents is going to include uh, a few things. So first of all, we're going to have some text, which is going to show uh, what level we are. With that text selected, we're going to change our font to match our menu UI font. So change it to mum cake and bold. And then we're going to add our progress bar to this. Now, what we're going to do here is add a border around it to add some special artwork to it. So let's add a border. Oh, onto the vertical box. Click on the border. And we're going to change the image. So change the image to that progress bar texture that we imported from our resource folder. And it's going to look a bit weird because it's not, obviously, the right size. So to make this the right size, we're going to put in a size box around our border. So right click on border and we're going to wrap with size box. Click on size box and on the right hand side, you can choose the overrides for this size. So for this, I'm going to do a height override and we'll do a height of say 30. Maybe a bit higher, we'll go uh, 50 for that one. And then for width we're going to go a minimum desired width for this one here and we're going to type in 100 actually let's do 200 there we go next we're going to go up to the top round corner and change fill screen to desired and now you can see what the appearance of our bar is looking like and i can already tell let's make our desired width minimum desired width uh, equal to 400 instead there we go so with the border now selected go to the right hand side and go to our image settings for our picture now at the moment it's stretching it like it did with our menu header but we don't want it to stretch it in this case okay we want to treat it as if it's a border so to do that we're going to go where it says draw as and it says image by default change that to box and then click on our margins and we want to change our margins for all of them so change this top one here to 0.2 and you can see what it's doing here. So rather than stretching it, it's taking 0.2 of its size, so 0.2 of 128, and locking it to the left-hand screen, locking it to the right-hand screen, locking it to the top, and locking it to the right, and then stretching the middle part. But because our middle part is transparent, you won't see any stretching or any weird marks to that. Okay, so there's a nice looking uh, border here. Next, we're gonna add a progress bar inside that border. So let's search for our progress bar and drag that into our border. Now immediately you can see the problem is it's covering up our nice artwork. So with the border now selected still, go up to the top and you'll see padding and you'll see padding for content. Change this in all of them to 10. And you can see it's now set it inside of our image. We can increase this or decrease it however you ever like. So let's try 13. And you can see the progress bar changes accordingly and this padding adds padding between the edge of the border asset and the progress bar asset okay so with the progress bar now selected we're going to scroll down and see what our options are so we can change our percent to see what it's going to look like and see it, it comes with default blue and this is what all progress bars look like at the start so for the fill i want to use a custom texture so let's import that new texture in so in my resource folder, we're going to drag in our progress bar fill underscore T and import that in. We can now go into our menu for our progress bar, click on it and change the fill image to your new texture. Progress bar fill. You'll see you'll need to change the fill color because it's mixing the blue with whatever the texture is. 
So let's change that to white by clicking the reset button here. And there you go. Now for my uh, case, I don't want to have a background image. So I'm going to scroll up to where it says background image. And we're going to choose that to say none. And hit compile. So there we have the basics of our progress bar. So on my text block up here, I'm just going to nudge that in a little bit. So we're going to go up to padding, left. And let's change that to 13. There we are. And we're going to make it just tem temporarily, say, to level 1. So you can see what it looks like in game. Click compile and close that. Open up your player menu UI. And then you find your, in your palette, user created section. And there you'll find your player uh, menu XP. So here you can drag this out now into your canvas panel. And there you have it. Clicking on it, you can now customize its location. So I'm going to anchor it to the top left, which makes sense, obviously. Um, but we could actually, let's put it actually inside that overlay. I think it might, might, might make more sense. Put it in the overlay. There we are. And there he is embedded into the top left of our overlay. So the overlay has this border, horizontal box on the right, on the right hand side, sorry, and on the left hand side, we've got the player XP. I'm just going to give it some padding. So let's go into our padding on the left here and give it a padding of 10, maybe a bit more, let's say 20. There we go. Hit compile, and let's see what it looks like in game. And that'll do for this episode. In the next episode, we'll add some functionality to our button tab. So when we click on the uh, tabs, the image will change according to which one is selected. And if you want to see that next episode right now, head over to patreon.com forward slash Ryan Daily, where a donation of just $1 will get you access to that video, plus many, many more. Big shout out and thank you to all of my patrons and YouTube members for their continued support. None of this would be possible without you guys, so thank you once again. If you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button. And if you have any comments or queries or any requests for certain videos, please leave a comment below. Thank you for watching and I'll see you all next time. Bye bye.